uh, getting this whole floor cleaned up right now because I got to put down the heat pipes in this and then pour some Jip Creek on top of it. Jip Creek goes on later in the week, so that's the goal is try to get this thing poured with concrete. That's a huge step in um, the next phase of the house. We're Jacob and Anna White. I made my wife a deal. If she stayed in Alaska, I'd build her a nice house. I'm making good on that deal. We got our manifolds placed upstairs, and we're gonna go ahead and pour drip breed in this whole floor. There's a spline return, so this is the feed from the boiler, and then these feed to heat the, the coils that are throughout the rooms. To prep for the uh, concrete pour, we went ahead and put these two bys all the way around. So we had planned on pouring the concrete ourselves, and so we just gone and put screed boards all around the perimeter and around all the beams to protect it, and also something to help us get our level. But then we did the math on renting concrete mixers and how many guys we'd need, and wheelbarrows and all that, and um, we just, couldn't see it being super cost effective to do it ourselves versus hiring it out. So um, instead of ripping all those screed boards out, we just left them. We figured that it would give a little bit of a barrier around the beams. It's uh, definitely something that we didn't need to necessarily do. But the other flip side is it's nice because let's say you're putting carpet down or something like that and you can just nail your tack strips to that. We ain't putting no carpet down. Well, I'm just saying it is uh, some people do. And... <laughs> there ain't going to be no carpet. Get the 70s shag. Yeah. Now there might be some carpet upstairs or in bedrooms, but yeah, for the moment, that's a good point. We gotta get everything out of here, clean it up, and then we also have to seal it up because this stuff is like, uh, it's like a water almost. It's really, um, it's all self-leveling. So we're gonna go ahead and take some silicone here and Anywhere we have a little gap here, we're going to silicone all around the bottom here after we get done vacuuming. And then that way, so we want the concrete or the concrete to stay on this floor. You have any small hole or anything that goes downstairs, it'll just run downstairs and create a giant mess. And we don't want that. So we want this thing to go, uh, this pour to be um, a good and not a major mishap. So like in here, we will foam these in that'll be sealed up. So it's just a matter of going through everything, looking for nail holes, and anywhere that we may have drilled a hole, and trust me, I drilled lots of holes in this thing last summer when we were working because it rained for a month and a half on us, so we had to go ahead and plug up a lot of those, which you can see there's a couple right there that have already been plugged with some plywood. Those were my drain holes last year. I'm a real big fan of radiant floor heat, and it's so nice to have a heat on the floor and your feet are warm. It's a, it's a real nice even heat throughout your home and uh, very comfortable. Last night I went and modified my uh, uh, tool for stapling down this hex tubing. What I'm trying to do here is I got a wide crown stapler and I am trying to make a jig for my uh, PEX tubing so I can put PEX tubing down like this. And so anyway, I'm trying to make a something that goes on the end of this wide crown stapler and then I'll go ahead and I'll put a horseshoe in here for where the PEX pipe lays in. That way when the staples go, they don't hit the pipe. What's this hole for? This is where the pipe's gonna go. Oh, I Hopefully this works because then that gun just has a slight mod to it and then I can just hold on to the other part of it and then never have to worry about you no, know, I use the, the gun as a staple gun. Bird 
Ah, let's see if this thing's gonna work. You wanna help daddy? Oh, I'm trying to make a little tool here. Getting a heated floor today. We're starting to run the radiant heated floor and um, the engineering diagrams we have call for really small spacings between the pipes. And what, but what happens is the pipe won't bend without kinking at that small radius. We're just trying to figure out a solution or figure out if we really can bend that much. It just seems like really tight. That's the pipe, not the real stuff. I got the layout figured out, so now it's just a matter of uh, start running some pipe. So I'll get here and start running loops in this room. So the jib creek's coming tomorrow, so um, it's gonna be a long day getting some uh, getting this pipe done. So we're gonna come from here. This is gonna be our supply. Okay. It's gonna go this way, and then we're gonna come back up to our return. Okay. Then we're gonna start again and do the same thing. You want to be about four inches from the wall, Rinka. So you can uncool it. We're going to go there, all the way down, and then we're going to make a loop and we're going to come back this way. Oh, well, how much was like a staple? We needed 3,000 staples and they were 50 cents a staple. Yeah, if you go buy the real staples. Like the actual. So we were doing 150 this. bucks in staples to do this. And then the tool rental. Okay, so we went two grand into the, just the fasteners. So he modded that gun and uh, we bought a box of staples. This box of staples was like 60 bucks. Yeah, right. I'm sure they were fancier, but once this gets poured, it's concrete. footage marks on it, so it's just kind of nice. I mean, we're right at a, right at 240, somewhere in there. Really close, so yeah, that, that'll be, that's one loop. Cut this off and this will be our return. And then we're gonna start again with another supply and keep running loops. And when we're all said and done, we're gonna pressure test this whole system.
contractor out of Fairbanks and they drove down for the day and they had a crew of four. And they have a trailer that has like a drip creep mixing machine and it does the whole process of pouring it in and adding water and, and then pumping it into the house. Um, and they just started it in the back rooms and they just worked their way out. so they could check the depth as they're pouring and um, we had put screed boards all around the perimeter and they just you know they just poured concrete right up to that and we taped off all our beams and protected everything so it, it did go pretty smoothly. It's been a little nerve-wracking too because there's a lot of beams in our staircase and so we had to do a lot of prep work too just to make sure that you have that stuff roll over the side splash on everything it's kind of a man it's, I don't want to see that I don't want to clean up a big mess so there's a ton of prep work to make it really seamless. Yeah, I found it. it yeah, I found level. it very, uh, very nice mm -hmm. that the guys that do it for a profession come down and do it, and literally they're in and out in four hours and gone. So, you know, how could you go wrong with that? Stapling down the pipes was really a lot of work, and I could barely move the next day. Um, but then we we're all stressed about the drip creep pour, and um, that ended up being the easiest day ever. <laughs> we just sat there. It was so the odd. <laughs> Yeah, after they finished it up, uh, we just opened up all the windows, tried to get as much moisture out as possible. Luckily, it was a really nice day. And let it cure up. You, um, we're already walking on it. We've been holding off on doing a lot of the interior finish work until we got this floor poured. Now that it's done, we can move on to painting the walls, mudding and taping the drywall, um, building cabinetry, and just really turning this house into a home. So yeah, now that we got the upstairs poured, that's uh, finished for all the radiant heat and we have it downstairs in the main slab and then now upstairs, so um, now we're completed in uh, running our radiant floor heat. Just gotta hook up the boiler. Yeah, well I'm subbing and that out too. put the septic in. <laughs> yeah, a lot of work left to do, but uh, definitely seeing the light at the end of the tunnel here. So we'll see you guys next week. Thank you for watching.